Shanzai.com and today, finally, uh, it's in the middle of the holidays between Christmas and uh, New Year's, but due to uh, high demand on your guys' part and the fact that we've actually got a few minutes to do it, uh, we've decided that it's time to do the re full review of the Hero Tab M10. If you recall from an earlier video and posting on the site, we did say the Hero Tab M10 is the actual uh, iPad clone for 2010. Now, considering that it's actually going to only be available on the market in early January uh, 2011, so another couple of weeks, uh, I think that uh, maybe it'll even be the iPad clone for 2011, who knows? But let's see what that all means as we take a closer look at the Hero Tab. First of all, we've got the box. You know, this is the typical Shanzai box that we've seen, but they've had to make it a little bit wider and they've had to make it uh, a little bit bigger in general to fit the product. But they, I guess they didn't feel like getting around to bothering to use a, a bigger image than the one that's been on all the other boxes. They've just spread it out. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it looks kind of funny in person just because they've got a very fuzzy image of an iPad that they've used for their, their graphic. Opening up in the box inside shows you a lovely little insert. And in that insert, of course, is the actual Hero Tab M10 that we looked at uh, before. And let's put that aside here for a moment. The rest of the box is pretty sparse, actually, which is also an Apple aesthetic, maybe that they're copying. Uh, you'll find that uh, the only other things that you'll find in the box are a connection to the USB and a power supply connection to uh, power up your device, of course. This one's got a Euro supply uh, connection on it uh, with the demo unit that we've received. Bearing in mind that the device is only going to be out in a couple more weeks, this is a pre-production sample, but it should be pretty close to what the final product that people will be receiving in the stores. So for those of you who didn't see our early introduction of the device where we compared it next uh, to an iPad, you can actually go and check that for yourself on video, but uh, we'll bring you through a quick walkthrough again of the external hardware of the device. Um, what you're looking at is a 4x3 aspect ratio, uh, I think it's a 1024 by 768 uh, screen resolution, or at least that's what they're advertising it as. We'll boot that up into Android 2.2. While it's booting up, we'll take a closer look at the capacitive screen, which is multi-touch and actually is quite beautiful when you're in the applications, as you'll see later. It's also got a little hardware button here on the bottom, which is typical of the iPad. In this particular case, when you press that, it'll take you back one step. Along the top of the device, we've got the iPad-like rocker switch, in this case, which performs a home and menu functions to round out your three typical buttons that you have on an Android operating system implementation. Uh, you can see that there's also a power indicator here on the front of the device to let you know that the device is on. That's a little bit different than the actual iPad. Along the bottom side here, we've got a connection, which is uh, for connecting to the USB and also to the power supply. It's not proprietary per se, but it is that third USB connection that's not micro, not mini, and I guess I should look up on Wikipedia and find out what the name of this particular connection is for you. Um, anyway, so it's not, it's still standard, you can use that. There's also some speaker out connection here, again, the same as the iPad. Uh, coming along the bottom of the device, you'll see there's clean and nothing. And the back side of the device is clean and nothing, and also does not include an Apple logo, which is about where they've managed to hold themselves back from copying the iPad outright. Now, on the end of the device here, you'll note that there is the uh, connection for the ear uh, plugs, the earphones rather, and uh, also your uh, sleep and your actually power on button. And then there's the one piece of the device that really is not Apple-like, and that's a black uh, bar here, which is used for actually hiding the uh, the I/O for the device, which are presented underneath here. Now, at this time, there's actually several slots. I'm not sure how well that shows up on camera. I'll try to shed some light on that for you. But in this one particular slot here, we'll be sticking our SD card, like so. until it snaps in there comfortably. There's a couple of other empty slots. They're not available for anything at the moment, but you can see that they'll be probably upgrading this for a 3G connection at some point. So let's just pop the uh, I.O. cover back on top there, like so. And now we can get into the actual software performance of the device. And there again, you can quickly see another shot of the, uh, the home screen and the beautiful capacitive touch view of it. 
One of the most impressive things about the iPad when it came out was of course its big beautiful screen which I think is probably one of the main attributes for why it became the uh, product that it did. Now we'll just turn on quickly here the uh, HeroTab M10 and take a look at their capacitive touchscreen and see how it reacts. But first we'll enter the device. Um, it's got sort of a customized little bit of the home screen. They've got a few apps on it here on the side. On the second screen, they've got a few of the widgets showing off that are connected to the internet, showing some of the temperature and things like that that you can find, typically find. But you can see that the response, there's no lag on it. It responds very quickly to the touch. And they've also got some sort of, um, they've tried to customize a little bit the uh, connections to some of your functions on the actual device. I think you're seeing a telephone icon down here. There is no phone function. When you, when you select that item, nothing's happening cannot request this activity. Uh, they're not really actually launching anything, but I think that does kind of show that in the future they're probably looking at adding some of the phone functionality or the 3D functionality to the device. It'd be really interesting to think of having a, a 10 inch sized uh, telephone device that could make calls. If you touch the browser button though, it does open up and enter into the browser, bringing up our dear friend Google in Chinese, thanks to Google's location specific uh, awareness there. Anyhow, we'll get to the browsing for you in just a moment while we have to take a, a further look at the screen. Let's go back to the home screen for a second there. And you can see, going into our settings, everything kind of responds and snaps to it very quickly. That is the 800 uh, megahertz Freescale processor inside. If you recall, there was some uh, initial information coming from these guys saying that they had a 1.2 gigahertz or 1 gigahertz processor even but opening up quadrant on the device and looking at the system information does reveal that it is actually a uh, arm processor uh, cortex a8 but a freescale 800 megahertz uh, version there so that's uh, uh, the mx51 which we've seen before and we're kind of familiar with the performance of that particular product on a couple of the other devices that we've reviewed. Um, I think if we, when we ran the actual Quadrant uh, benchmark results, we can do that just to see, but I, I, if I recall correctly, uh, it does perform about the same as a Nexus One actual phone does, so that's pretty good performance for a Shenzai tablet, I would say. So now we're looking at the device uh, benchmark results a score over 1600, about 640 or 50 it looks like. You can see the orange mark here. It's at the top of the list of the products that are being uh, displayed here. Above the Nexus One, Moto Droid, HTC Evo, Moto Droid X and Samsung Galaxy S to give you an idea in terms of how Quadrant benchmarking performs on the device. So let's open up some pictures from the gallery so we can uh, take a look at some of the multi-touch functionality. Slide it over into uh, portrait mode here. And actually one of the interesting, oops, sorry, from portrait mode <laughs> to, to landscape mode. And you'll find one of the interesting things about the device is that actually it does have a 360 degree accelerometer. So, which is, whoops, let's go back on that. So that it does actually move around as you move around and quite responsively and quick, which is great. Now let's bring up an image. Maybe this isn't the perfect one to choose, but you can scale and make things happen with the multi-touch. Not only does the device move around, but you can pinch and zoom to make things happen on the screen. And that also works in the browsing function for you as well. special effects were added by me. So one of the things about having a nice big screen is that you can do all kinds of fun things on that. There's a ton of applications that were actually included as part of the device package uh, that we received as a demo unit. I'm not sure if those come all included when you buy the product, but uh, chock full of applications. Uh, let's open up some of the ones we've got here. There's a bring a game for you so you can see how that uh, plays on the big screen. There we are, we've got EA Games Monopoly. How can you go wrong with that? Uh, Monopoly is a pretty simple game here to play on the tablet. It's nice to have it on the big screen though because then you can actually uh, 
see the full board almost like it is that you're a kid between your uh, you and your family on the kitchen table there drag or shake the device rolls and automatically moves your man around the, the board Ooh, looks like uh, we just land on Hollywood taking advantage of the good responding accelerometer and the uh, 3D goodness performance of the device. Actually, uh, this is probably one of the best versions of uh, this particular game we've demoed before on a few of our other videos. Uh, oh, graphics are good and big and fill the entire screen nicely. The accelerometer behaves well and makes uh, controlling the device a lot better than you'd think because I'm a lousy driver. I don't play a lot of video games, to be honest. Not this type of video games anyway. And we're around the bend for the first lap. Here's a few moments of us uh, flying around in uh, roller coaster on the iPhone and Android platform. You can see this game being played. I'm probably about to have a rather unpleasant crash landing. I've only lost a couple of passengers. But again, performance is good and it looks great, of course, on the big screen. And here I do flying to my death. So let's uh, take a look at some uh, video content that we put on the device. Uh, we've still got our old booth bait video for you for a few more videos it seems like. Uh, we've reviewed the Freescale processor before and we know from that our experience that actually uh, it doesn't quite manage to uh, really plow through the 1080p video so well. It's still stuttering as you can see and holding a little bit on that video. So that's typically what we were expecting from that. Um, it's almost there, but just not quite. But you'll find as soon as we drop down to, here's an H.264 720p video. You can see here, performance is fine, smooth. The girls are twirling in their normal twirling speed. The video performance is good. So 720p and down, you're basically gonna get what you expect. Uh, the Matroska 720p V, <laughs> 720p video file that we downloaded uh, unfortunately wasn't playable on the device so again there's not a support for that so you'll have to be converting your files to the correct formats. There are a lot of formats that are supported though so that's the good news. One thing that surprises considering how much attention to detail that the Hero Tab has put into looking like an uh, Apple-like tablet is we expected to find ebook reading software on the device and unfortunately there was nothing installed and included out of the box which is a bit of a shocker. But uh, let's do a little bit of web surfing. Of course, we always like to visit our favorite website. It takes a few moments to connect to our Wi-Fi signal there before it takes off. And now you can see it's starting to load. Uh, Shantai.com. Now, this has Android 2.2 and uh, Adobe 2.1 support for Flash, so you can see of course our Google Flash advertisements are going to be showing up here in the top of the uh, shortly. And you can see it's a fantastic 4x3 aspect ratio. You get a lot of the website on the screen. Uh, flipping it over in portrait mode is even better. You can see a lot of the stories that are on there. It's very, very similar in terms of uh, performance into the Apple-like browsing experience. It's not quite as good, but still it is very nice. And of course, you can pinch and zoom with your multi-touch. I noticed in the, the forum or in the comment section on one of our introductory uh, to this device, there was a desperate comment looking how to change the volume. There is no volume uh, adjustable from the rocker switch in hardware, but if you look up here in the top right hand corner on the home screen, there is a tiny little volume switch. If you press that volume connection, it'll bring it up here and you can adjust your volume like so. Carry on, business as usual. Now, to wrap things up for the Hero Tab. Now, I think uh, as we've kind of stated before, we have yet to see a tablet come from the Shanzai that is better than the iPad. We haven't seen one yet that's better than the iPad. Have we seen ones that we think offer different features in terms of hardware and functionality and provide really good value for their price? Definitely we have. Uh, if you're a fan of the iPad, you like the form factor, you like the size, you don't like the price tag, or perhaps you prefer Android, then probably the Hero Tab is the device for you. 
I think uh, the price that Mary Mobiles are saying that it's two hundred ninety nine dollars for so we're saying three hundred bucks for three hundred dollars. That's less than half the price for an iPad. You're definitely getting a lot more than half of the functionality.